Our top story, a fire breaks out at a petroleum products distribution uh, station in the southern city of Jizan in Saudi Arabia. Kingdom's energy ministry said projectile attack has resulted in a fire in one of the terminal's tanks. He added that no casualties were reported from the attack. Riyadh didn't say who was behind the attack. However, it said earlier the Saudi-led coalition had destroyed several explosive-laden drones from the Yemeni army. Joining us now to Detroit is uh, Yusuf Maori, Yemeni journalist and political analyst. For more on the story, hello Yusuf, hope you're safe and doing well. And it seems like by the day, the uh, Yemeni uh, factions and the Yemeni army are getting more and more sophisticated in their retaliatory attacks against the Saudis. Your thoughts? Well, Ansar Allah is not a pacifistic group. They will resort to violence in a certain limited context. Uh, and now, as it seems, the tables are beginning to turn. It is now Saudi Arabia that, that is being targeted. It is Saudi airports, Saudi military bases, Saudi public and economic installations that are routinely targeted by Yemeni drones and by Yemeni ballistic missiles. And if Saudi, the message here is, if Saudi Arabia doesn't lift the blockade, then pretty soon we could see Yemeni fighters begin to wage a ground offensive into Saudi Arabia, in addition to the routine attacks by airstrikes, mil uh, ballistic missiles, and by aerial drone attacks. Uh, it seems now that Yemeni fighters, the Ansar Allah movement is, re is returning the favor, and um, Saudi Arabia, if they're not careful, they're going to get a taste of what it's like to live in a country where airstrikes are raining from all directions. So Saudi Arabia needs to make a uh, needs to think, and they need to make a serious decision now. Either they're going to leave Yemen alone, once and for all, or they should perhaps begin to prepare themselves for what's to come in the future. And as the Ansar Allah leader has mentioned, it's not going to be a happy ending for Saudi Arabia if they continue this offensive in Yemen, if they continue to impose this blockade that is starving hundreds of thousands of Yemeni children, and if they continue to carry out bombard, uh, aerial bombardment campaign that has killed children in school buses, that has killed children when they are sleeping in their room, you cannot live in a situation like this. The only option uh, any people have in that situation is to fight back by any means necessary. And we see it today. We see Ansar Allah, the Yemeni army, uh, having the ability to build domestic missiles and uh, being able to punch the bully in the nose. And that's what Ansar Allah feels like it's going to end the war. They believe that uh, peace is not going to uh, come into existence unless they're able to deliver devastating blows to Saudi, to the Saudi monarchy. And that is what we are seeing unfold before our eyes today. Yeah, at the same time, uh, Yusuf, uh, you mentioned when the uh, when the Saudis are bombing, they're, they're bombing infrastructure, weddings, funerals, uh, get-togethers, um, uh, uh, gas stations, uh, UN shelters, schools. We've seen it all. And, but when the Ansarullah you mentioned, when they carry out the retaliatory tax against, it's usually against only military installations or sometimes uh, petroleum. Uh, and they're, they're basically it's hardware. It's not people. So it's a big difference. You know, they're basically just trying to make a point to make this thing stop. They're not out to kill women and children. Well, certainly not, certainly not, and and, and they and they haven't killed, uh, you know, given the hundreds of airstrikes that Ansar Allah has returned to Saudi Arabia, I don't think they've killed um, even one innocent Saudi citizen. However, when we look at what's happening on the other side, Saudi Arabia is a professional killer when it comes to innocent children. They've targeted innocent children at hospitals, at public schools. Uh, on their way to school on buses. Of course, we've seen, we've seen the atrocities that Saudi Arabia has committed. And the fact that the UN and the US are com complicit in this aspect, I think speaks to a greater concern in the region. Why is the US and why is the UN sitting back and allowing people to starve uh, here you know, in, 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 in 21? Why are they standing back and allowing Saudi Arabia to get away with genocide? and mass massacre. It's a, it's an everyday reality for Yemenis, the fact that they can't even get food, they can't even get fuel to travel, you know, because of, of the blockade. 
and you expect them to live, uh, you know, in, the, in in a state where they are, they go to sleep and they're concerned and worried about an airstrike landing on top of their homes. That's the reality that's happening in Yemen, and unfortunately, world powers have sat back and allowed this to happen for six years straight. And unfortunately, it seems like. The UN, the US, and Saudi Arabia, they're not going to give respect to the Yemeni people unless the Yemeni people prove that they can threaten the stability of Saudi Arabia. And I think that's what's happening right now is that the, the security and stability of Saudi Arabia is being threatened by the Ansar Allah movement. And that's what it's going to take to get them to take negotiations seriously. And that's what it's going to take to end the war. All right, stay safe. Uh, thanks for joining us from Detroit, Michigan. Mr. Uh, Yusuf Maori, Yemeni journalist and political analyst.